Nandu has a long history with London Business School and an even longer history with Nestle, from product manager through to country manager in the Philippines, then Indonesia, turbulent environments, not just now, but then, and then Nandu moved on to one of the most senior leadership positions in the company, on the executive board with the responsibility for uh, Asia, Africa and Oceania, AOA, we call it. A wonderful journey. We are fascinated by stories of who wins and who loses, especially in turbulent times. What I loved, Nandu, about your leadership story is the resilience that you were developing as a leader, first of all, and you had the gift of giving that lesson of resilient leadership to others. How did you do that? Well, I personally lived through the example in Indonesia uh, when, uh, in 1998, the exchange rate suddenly crashed from mm. 2,000 rupiah to a dollar. It went to something like 17,000 rupiah to a dollar mm. in the space of six months. So dramatic devaluation, price increases. It was tragic because there was an entire segment of population who moved from middle class into poverty. Uh, so there was a lot of pain that consumers faced. Uh, there was a lot of disruption that companies and trade faced. And uh, it was an existential question issue for many companies. Uh, there were companies who chose to leave and go away from, the, from Indonesia or ASEAN in those days. And uh, Nestle was one of the companies that decided to stay. Mm -hmm. We decided to keep investing in brands, no compromise on quality standards. We decided to keep investing in people. Uh, we took a hit top line and bottom line for a couple of years in the mm -hmm. late 90s but the business rebounded because we had invested in brands, quality and people and very soon we were, we, we, we were not only back to our previous levels but we had substantially surpassed it with higher market shares and mm -hmm. higher, better, stronger overall presence. I know, Nandu, that you speak about we, which may be the core answer to the question, what did it take to be so resilient? We had a great team. Yeah. We had a great team and within Nestle we were able to share learnings from one part of the world to the other. Even within the ASEAN markets at the time, uh, we had really this sharing and collaborative uh, uh, culture that was uh, developed that cared first for people and for customers and brands. So, Nandu, what's really striking is the humanization of Nestle and back to the theme of resilience, it's that culture which enabled you to ride out the storms, the great team. But my question broadly is, again, what makes that possible? What do leaders put in place? And we have at London Business School been very interested in the structures that you and your colleagues created, which I believe are still called the Nestle Globe. That's correct. Globe as in the sense of the Earth, the world we live in. Could you tell us a little bit about GLOBE and its significance? Well, the element that needs to support flexibility and agility is the ability to invest in platforms. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular instance, Nestle is a company that operates across a diverse set of businesses from pet food to infants to coffee and food. And there was a certain amount of complexity intrinsic in this business model and there was a time uh, about 20 years ago that you had consultants saying why is Nestle so diversified and the Nestle response was to say we're going to take this complexity and make it a competitive advantage and to do this we're going to create a common set of business processes that go across all these businesses that was globe but eventually it's given Nestle a platform whereby these diverse businesses can talk to each other in the same language, people can move between these diverse businesses and then this platform allows us to build additional capabilities such as global shared service centers, for instance. So the platform allows us to contend with complexity. The platforms allows us to contend with change ah. and disruption that mm. happens out there. If there's a sudden upsurge in demand, can you cater to it? If there's a sudden uh, crisis in, in the Indonesian economy, how do you deal with it? So, in turbulent times, we need agility, but agility is not enough. As well as agility, 
we need four constant factors. And those four constant factors are our purpose, our constancy of purpose, our resilience to take us through the storms, our ability to create platforms which enable the future, and governance structures which sustain our focus not on the short term around which we'll bob around or the hopelessly vague long term, but the medium term through which we can realistically act.